That's right, the harmonic series that you know from calculus and the prime numbers are very much linked. Here's how. This is the harmonic series, uh, the sum of one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, etc. So how is this related to prime numbers? Let's first consider a different series. I'm going to first consider the series that is just one plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth. So just one over powers of two. Uh, what is this? This is in fact the geometric series and I can add it up. Uh, this is a geometric series of ratio one half. So the sum is one over one minus a half. I'm just going to leave it indicated like this. But this series is not the entire harmonic series because, well, you can see I'm missing a third, a fifth, a sixth. Uh, I'm missing a lot of terms. So, for example, I'm missing all these terms, the third plus ninth and 27th and so on. Uh, but this one is also a geometric series. So this series here adds up to one over one minus a third. Now, what happens if I multiply this series times this series? Well, then uh, to compute how much this is, I would start doing the distributive law, one times everything here, uh, and then a half times everything here, and so on. So I'm going to get terms like one, one times one. I'm also going to get a half, one times a third. I'm also going to get a third, but one half times a third, that's going to be a sixth. So I also get the sixth. So let's see how much we get. So putting these two together, what I get is one plus fractions that are one over a number that is divisible by two or three. So two, three, four, six, eight, nine, so all those. But you see, you, this is still not the harmonic series because I'm missing a fifth. To get to see that fifth, what I need to multiply is three different series together. The series for the powers of two, the series for the powers of three, and the series for the powers of five. And that gives me uh, this series, which is starting to look like a harmonic series, but I'm still missing terms like a seventh. So what I need to do is multiply infinitely many series, one for each prime. So if I multiply a series for each prime, for the powers of each prime, what I get at the end is this series, which is the harmonic series. But now remember that each one of those series is a geometric series, so I can add it up. So that is one over one minus a half. And for any prime, one of those series is one over one minus one over P. So you get that the harmonic series, the sum of it, which is infinity anyway, is also the product of all these terms. So once again, the harmonic series is the product of these terms, one for each prime number, which in product notation is like this, the product over all prime numbers of one over one minus one over P. Or if you prefer, is the product of our primes of one over one minus P inverse. But now comes the best part, because the Riemann set of function has this expression, and this expression can also be expressed as an infinite product. Yeah, so it turns out that the Riemann set of function can be written as the product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus p to the minus s. So what we've just seen is that the harmonic series has this expression, and this expression is the value of the Riemann set of function at s equals 1. However, uh, this is infinite, it's an infinite sum, and the value of the Riemann set of function at s equals 1 is also infinite because this function has a pole at s equals 1. But nonetheless, the way this approaches infinity has to do with how many primes are there up to a certain point. So the growth of this function is related to the uh, distribution of prime numbers, which is, of course, something that we are very interested in. And that growth has been studied significantly. So if you go to the comment, to the video that uh, this comment is about, uh, then you'll see about the euler mascheroni constant. And the Euler and Mascheroni were interested in that constant because of this relationship to prime numbers.